So maybe if you don't want to go to a, a, a smoke-filled, ale-riddled tavern, perhaps you want to come to some place a little bit more sophisticated like this. Hello, we're Breaking Character. In our last video, we went to a tavern, a real salty, you know, punch in the face, <laughs> drink an ale kind of a, a tavern. But maybe you want to go to some place that has a little more class, sophistication, a little bit more art. Which is why we invited our friends with us today to talk to us about their tea shop. So who do we have with us today? We have... I'm Gina, I'm also known as Zephyr, and this is my tea shop. Well, do you have a name for your tea shop? It is the Golden Wind Tea Shop, because that is my last name, I'm Zephyr Golden Wind, so... And we, <laughs> we have a, a patron with us here as well. Uh, yeah, my name is Kyle, but I also go by Malik, and I've been a long-time patron of this tea shop. <laughs> oh, so tell us about this tea shop. Tell us about... Uh, where do you run this first off? Um, so... The LARP that I frequent most is called Circle of Swords, uh, Circle of Swords Quest, uh, or Cost Quest, and it has been going on for what, almost like almost thirty years or yeah. something like that. It's it's been quite a long while. Twenty five, thirty, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. Um, I've been going for the past ten years, and about I don't know four, five years ago maybe I kind of grew tired of it going out, killing things, coming back, going out, <laughs> killing things, coming back, going out, killing things. So I wanted to do something that wouldn't, that didn't require me to go out and kill things and come back. Um, not not so. everybody's a murderous <laughs> adventurer type, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, look, there's nothing wrong with going out and being a murder hobo every now and then, but <laughs> sometimes you just want to sit down. You want to actually have a talk with some of the other people that are around in your LARP. Um, you want to have something to drink that's not necessarily an alcoholic mm. beverage. Um, oh, yeah. You know, and for our LARP, it runs a lot closer to D&D, &D, where you form a party and you go out. And I think that another part of adventuring such as that is there has to be another break into it. So a lot of other characters, not just Zephyr, uh, de definitely one of the first ones that actually engaged in it. There's a entire merchant group now that have found that um, with the other side of adventuring is spending time at a tavern. And tavern, as you said, doesn't always have to be... Um, uh, raucous display of violence. <laughs> it can also be a very nice relaxing place and uh, d uh, our LARP definitely goes into the winter months and this is extremely welcome oh, in those times. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I, can, I, I can definitely see that. Let's talk about the main thing we got here. What are you serving? What do you got? <laughs> right now, we're drinking tea. <laughs> <laughs> so in our, our last video that we made, we talked about how to, to make fake alcohol, how to make fake whiskey or you know, other, those kind of services, but you actually are making tea. This isn't fake. Oh, yeah. This, is, this yeah. is actual real tea. Uh, talk to me about that process, you know. So, uh, yeah, it does require electricity. Um, this is my water kettle. <laughs> it's uh, a really nice one. I used to have a much cheaper one that I, because it's a LARP, things could get broken. Oh, yes. Um, yes. And that's actually what happened to my last one. We were unloading my car oh. and it fell and broke. So now I have this really nice one until I get a less nice one <laughs> again to take two LARPs again. <laughs> so you mentioned before that you didn't want to break character of uh, uh, bringing this into your um, your tea shop. So what do you get? You make the you boil the water in this, and then what do you do next? Um, so usually I have this. Uh, there's usually a bench behind my my shop. So this isn't just in full display in front of everyone. It's usually you know down out of the way so that it's kind of a little bit more inconspicuous and then whenever the water is ready I just take regular teapot there's nothing you know it's it's just a teapot nothing fancy about it um, I brew the tea and then the teapot hangs out until it's either uh, usually for an hour hour and a half uh, whenever it starts to cool um, I'll usually dump it because nobody well nobody <laughs> wants cold tea I also don't want to I, I do know a little bit about like uh, food service laws and stuff. Oh yeah. And you can't have a hot beverage out for too too long. So as soon as it starts, as soon as it hits, usually an hour or until it starts to get a little cool, then I just dump it, make a fresh pot. That's something we didn't even consider about the the food safety of this. You know, we're out in the middle of the woods, and hopefully we have access to running water and, and soap. But you're obviously taking as many steps as you can to ensure that you're producing a, a safe product for your larpers. Mm -hmm. So now I've. I've been around with your tea thing a lot, and I've sampled a lot of different teas. Do you have like a selection in mind when you make it? Oh. Can you talk about like the different kinds that you bring, as opposed to summer and winter months? Maybe in the transitions, if you even have a preference. Um, I don't really. 
really, I don't really uh, change teas up by, by season or anything. It's kind of whatever I have at home. Um, I, I'm kind of a tea snob at home, so I've just, I've got a lot of it. <laughs> and before I go to events, I kind of go, hmm, jasmine tea sounds good. This black tea sounds good. This Puyer tea sounds good, and I kind of throw them into a box, and that's my selection for the weekend. It's kind of just whatever I'm feeling at the time. <laughs> so what, what is this called again? So the tea that we're drinking today is black tea. It's called Pirate's Blood. It's uh, got all sorts of <laughs> it's got all sorts of fruits uh, alongside black tea leaves. So it is it is nice and sweet. <laughs> the fruit is what gives it that sweetness because you're actually tasting the fruit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't lie. Like I'm not a, a big tea drinker. You know, Lipton's the best as I'm gonna go, and you know, <laughs> drown it in cream and sugar. But this is really delectable. I can see why your players really like coming to this. Mm -hmm. Now, you obviously have have more than just tea here to sell. We we did talk about potentially selling food or iced tea. What else do you have for your shop? Because this is more than just a tea shop. This this <laughs> looks like you actually are running an Etsy shop at your LARPs as well. Would you like to go through and explain some of the things you have? Mm -hmm. Well, it looks like a shop because it is a shop. Um, everything that you see on this table, uh, with the exception of this this little thing right here, um, is all made by me. Um, I do do I, yeah I do do I do a lot of crafting. <laughs> <laughs> she said do do. <laughs> We're adults. <laughs> so this does look like a shop because it is a shop. Uh, so everything that you see here is actually something that I've handmade. I am a crafter on the side, so I do sewing and I do chain mail. Uh, this this one thing here is the only, uh, I guess, little bundle that I haven't made. These are all in-game items specifically for Cost Quest, the LARP that we go to. So these are all potions. We've got armor patches in case you need to repair your armor. Mana sticks for the mage that runs out of mana. And uh, these are different uh, other items. There's like a lot of lock picks and pry bars and generally that kind of stuff for if you need something that you don't have. Um, one of the cool things about, because uh, again, a lot of LARPs we run off of item cards. Mm -hmm. So you took, instead of just having a stack of, of paper sitting there, you put them in a nice little book. That way yeah, it, it so, looks a little more in-game. So like you that. can you can flip through it. You see something you like, you just take it out. If I can get to it, <laughs> I can't because what are fingers? So if you see something you like, you just take it out. Oh, I'd like to purchase this. And then here you go. It's yours now. It, it's really nice. You, you said you've done some sewing as well. Can you talk to us about your our little buddies here? What have we got? Yeah, so I'm a huge nerd on top of being a LARPer. So um, we've got this lovely chocobo. And for any of our Avatar friends, cute little turtle duck. Um, whoop, there they go. They do, sit, they do sit up real nice. They're mm -hmm. cute. Um, <laughs> so yeah, on top of, on, on of the in-game items, I make things for the kids. Stuff for your beloved if you want uh, some lovely chainmail. Like, we've got there's hairpins in the front. Yeah, I, I actually didn't, I didn't realize those were hairpins uh, made out of chainmail. Yeah, we'll flip them over. There you go. That's yeah, awesome. like barrettes, they just sit in your hair. Bracelets. Mm -hmm. And then you have these are, if I remember correctly, portal sashes? Yeah, well, they're different kinds of sashes, but these are also for in game effects. The greens for sanctuary, mm. which means you can't be hurt by damaging spells. Um, the yellow is a portal in case you need to go from one end to another, which also goes with the portal potion if you don't have the spell. Um, so little things like that. There's a whole bunch of different ones, but I just brought a couple with me. So, so you're not only selling, you know, a, a wonderful little treat after a long hard day. You're also selling in-game items for players, and you're also selling, you know, out-of-game uh, accessories mm -hmm. for your players as well. Now, obviously, the in-game items you usually pay for with in-game money. Mm -hmm. But do you also accept in-game money for your other items as well? I do. Our our game system actually has a a basic con uh, conversion rate. So one gold piece is equivalent to five dollars. So that's how I base all of my prices in game is around that. Could you so. also spend you know real currency on it as well, U.S. Yeah, money? Too? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I accept both types of currency while in game. I should <laughs> I should note that <laughs> while in game because I I'm the type of person that. Uh, I want, I consider the people that I LARP with to be my friends, and I want my friends to have nice things. So, you know, maybe your job doesn't pay that well, or maybe you're going through a little bit of hardship, but you really, really like that bracelet. Hey, maybe you just went on a mod and you made some nice gold, so I will gladly accept gold uh, instead of uh, U.S. dollars. 
for. <laughs> They're the things that I sell. There's also been other times where you have someone else coming to the event. Maybe you want to show someone new out to the thing that you go to. This is also another nice way of helping them get like acclimated to the environment because not only is there in-game stuff, there's really nice out-of-game stuff too. And I'm sure we all know that like we're in the LARPing, we're into seeing all this period history stuff. Maybe you have a friend that likes to do leatherworking stuff. Maybe you have a friend that's really into other crafting of that time. If you have a merchant friend, you could be like, hey, do you mind selling this for me? It's also a way to get a lot of other people involved in this too. It also it, it helps with the immersion and also get like some other people to your game. I, I'll be frank, when, when I first went to this game, I didn't know what a poultice was, or I didn't know what mm -hmm. mana folk I was. So if, if I saw a display like this, I could walk over and be like, well, what are these popsicle sticks? And you'd be able to explain in, char in, in game, in character, these are this. Mm -hmm. So it, it, like you said, it opens the door for new players to come over and explore as well. So with someone new maybe trying to do this, what issues can you tell them about like in-game and out-of-game money-wise how like what all actually goes into this like what are you actually spending on this what does it take to actually run this specifically money wise so just from a monetary point uh it does it does cost money to to make something like this now it's not it's not your go it's not going to be you're going to spend a hundred dollars every event on something because obviously a teapot's a teapot unless you break it you're going to reuse it and reuse it and reuse it until the end of time um a lot of stuff can be either thrifted, bought on sale, that sort of thing. You know, I almost, I almost <laughs> never spend full price on anything. But just to, to put it in, per, in perspective, um, just this hot water kettle here probably costs about 75 bucks. Now there are much, much cheaper ones. And the one that I used to have was much cheaper, um, but it broke. So I had to resort to my, the personal one that I use at home as our backup until I get another one. Um, in terms of just strictly speaking tea because yes. this not going into coffee or if you do cold drinks or, or anything like that but teapots can be expensive i bought this one at a thrift store for like three bucks so it's <laughs> yeah. not so you can you can get really you know cheap stuff i was waiting for like the, it's twenty dollars it was a, no, it was no, a thirty dollar no. set three bucks like, that's great no thrift, I, thrift. I have three or four teapots Please. that i take to every event they're they're all either like three or four bucks because mm -hmm. at some point it's a LARP. Yeah. You might drop it. Someone might bump it because we're all carrying big, bulky, you know, oh, stuff. Oh, wearing armor and yeah. yeah. Making money isn't the point for me, so I ask for donation only. So sometimes people are nice enough to come by and throw a couple coins in my in my jar here. So even though I'm spending the four or five bucks for you know the bag of tea, and even though I brew that all weekend, I might only make a couple silver or something in tips. But that's that's not it's not about making money yeah. for me. Is, it's, it's, not. it's the experience that you get to share with everybody mm -hmm. because it's you're doing something that you love which is you love drinking tea and it's an easy <laughs> way to share that with everybody else yeah. too because even as you mentioned earlier that you said you um like Lipton's the way to get for me <laughs> and like you get to experience other things we've had other people at the LARP being like I'm not really a tea person it's like we'll try this then and they're like this is really great, where did you get that? So you get to uh, share something that's personal with you too. Like maybe you do like pulled pork, you could make your own and try out like different barbecue sauces, and, like things people wouldn't think of. There's ways to put an angle to it that it makes it your own. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what LARP is. You're communally storytelling, but you're also bringing a piece of yourself to this game to share. And yeah. obviously this is an amazing thing that you're sharing with, with your players. Yeah, you, if you're looking to start up some sort of in-game thing like this, you have to be willing to lose real life money. Yeah. Because I, the whole reason I have this other little stuff is if I want to actually make real life money, this is the stuff that makes money. Nothing, nothing oh, else, yeah. you know, makes any sort of, of, and I profit very little from this stuff. It's, it's more about the experience for me rather than the, I want to sell 20, you know, plushies <laughs> this weekend. It's not about that at all. This is yeah. just a... It fills my store, it makes me look like a real store, but at the center of it, I'm just trying to have a nice conversation with people over a cup of tea. People, you know, people have this, this preconception of like, oh, you sell tea all weekend, you make more money than the adventurers out there digging through the dungeons. Yes. Is that true? Do you actually make um, more money than... It depends on the weekend. Sometimes it is true, and sometimes it is absolutely not. There have been weekends where I have just been like, <laughs> like, 
how, how much is here. <laughs> but then there are other weekends where I this couple these couple little coins and my bowl might be all I've made all weekend. Yeah. It is it is really hit and miss. Zephyr, final thoughts. If you would like to start a store or some kind of eatery or drinkery or anything, do it. It adds so much to a game. All it, I mean, even just the atmosphere is there's a whole thing where people can just come and they can sit, enjoy a nice beverage, play with your uh, wares that you're trying to sell, you know? It is, it is a great uh, thing to add to any game. It adds role play, it adds a place for people to hang out, it adds mm -hmm. nourishment of the mind, of the body, and mm -hmm. dare I say, nourishment of the soul. <laughs> you dare. I dare. I agree. I dare. <laughs> So, uh, I, I think that's been, uh, thank you very much for coming and showing us your shop. Uh, we can't wait to come out and see it. Now, you said that you play Cause Quest. Mm -hmm. That is the LARP that, that you will find Gina's shop at. Mm -hmm. um, but then, do you also have a place to sell this stuff online? Let's say somebody saw this beautiful turtle duck from Avatar <laughs> and, and fell in love with it and wants to take it home. Do you have any other way to, to sell your products? Sure, I, when I'm not selling in person at events, I do have an Etsy store online, and you can find it. Uh, my shop name is Golden Wind Creative. So we'll put a link uh, in the description or something. But also, if you wanna check out the LARP that we frequent, it is uh, Cost Quest, that's Circle of Swords, and you can find them online at circleofswords.com. So we're always looking for new players. We're located in Western Pennsylvania. So if you guys, we're largely a fantasy uh, based game. So if you wanna, we're heavily story driven. So if you're looking for something that's not just, we, we love to beat things up, but if you're looking for a little more than just beating everything up all day, uh, come check us out at uh, Quest. So we'll be, we'll be sure to come out and uh, have another sip of tea of yours. I, I honestly can't wait. <laughs> So we are Breaking Character, thank you very much, and uh, have a good day. <laughs> she said doo-doo. <laughs> We're adults. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a hard cut right there. She sure did, boss. She said, yeah, she said doo-doo. <laughs> you hear this broad, she said doo-doo. <laughs> the upscale, cl uh, classy establishment said doo-doo. <laughs>